Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am one of the senior editors at MyJo in Toronto, and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial, and this time we're probably going to take a look at one of the most complex effects to pull off correctly, especially if you're working inside of a non-linear editing application, and I'm talking about the dreaded chroma key effect. It's something that we as editors have to do all the time, and in most cases we find ourselves going to a compositing application to do this effect, but you know what? With the power of Boris Continuum Complete and three effects inside this package, we can pull this effect off very quickly and very easily right from within the Avid interface. And as you can see in front of you, this is actually a shot that I used for my Learn at Your Own Pace tutorial series for Boris Continuum Complete for Adobe's After Effects. This was a green screen shot that I did myself and it had a couple things going against it. First of all, I'm an editor, I'm not a cameraman, so I don't know a lot about lighting and setting things up like that, so my key was very uneven. Second thing I had going against me was the fact that I was shooting in HDV. Obviously, if you talk to any cinematographer, they're going to tell you never shoot green screen, especially with HDV. This case I did, but you know what? With the power of Boris Continuum Complete, everything turned out perfectly as you can see in front of you right now. And I'm going to show you how simple this effect is to do inside of Avid's Media Composer right now. Okay, so let's quit out of QuickTime and let's Command Tab into Avid's Media Composer. Now, obviously, to do a chroma key, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a foreground, and in this case, I have my untitled.mov. There I am sitting in my basement in front of not the greatest green screen shot in the world. And obviously, I need a background. In this case, I created this virtual set with the Boris TV logo looping in the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to take myself... We're going to key me in over top of this background, but we're going to put me over here so that we can also position things inside this monitor if we wanted to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shot of myself here, and let's just mark an in and out point here, and any point of me talking is fine, and I'm just going to drop this in. I'm going to create a new sequence, and I'm going to create a second layer because obviously because I am the foreground, I want to go on the topmost layer. So I'm just going to drop myself in like that. I'm going to hit T to mark the entire clip on my keyboard, and I'm going to choose the virtual set, and we're obviously going to drop this in behind me just like that. So what we have now is me in front of my green screen on the top layer and my virtual set in the background. Okay, so we need a place to start, and we're going to be using three effects to create this look. First effect that we're going to need is obviously chroma key. So let's press Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows to call up the effects palette. I'm going to come down to keys and mat, and you can see that I have a whole bunch of effects in here that deals with just keys and mats. And I got to point out right now, this is probably one of the most in-depth collection of chroma keying effects specifically that you're going to find in any package out there today. There's an effect in here that's going to cover just about any problem you might run into when you're keying, or if you've been given a mat that's no good, you can easily get in and clean that up. So we're obviously going to start out with chroma key. I'm going to take that effect, I'm going to drag it down here onto my shot now. First thing that's important to consider with this shot is the fact that there's all of this stuff over here on both sides and even at the top that I'm not really going to need. So let's get rid of that first before we do our key. I'm going to press Shift and Y, which is my shortcut to go into effects mode. Keep in mind that if you don't have Shift and Y mapped on your keyboard to be effects mode, you can simply click on the effects mode button right here to get into effects mode to work along. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is some geometrics work. I'm going to come down to geometrics and we're going to want to adjust our crop. So I'm just going to take the left crop, I'm just going to drag it out here. Let's stick it at about, oh, I don't know, 25, sure. That's pretty close right there. And we're going to want to do the same thing over here on the right. So let's take our right crop, just drag it over. We'll drag it over roughly about the same here, 25. That's pretty good. A little bit too close maybe. Let's just come back a little bit here. That's pretty good. Now we're going to cut a little bit off the top as well, just so we're not having to deal with all of this information out here that we don't need. So let's just take the top here and we'll just crop it down like that. And we're ready to apply the chroma key effect. Now one thing that I should point out is that depending on how you like to work, because we are working in BCC7, you do have your on-screen widgets here that control density, lightness, and balance that's obviously right here below the output of composite. So you can, if you want to, simply work with the on-screen widgets like I'm going to do in just a second, or if you want finite control over the effect, you can simply use the slider bars over here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is set a color for my key. And I'm just going to pick a color roughly in about here, and I think that's pretty good. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky. How do I know exactly what's going on with this shot? Well, as I just mentioned, right here it says output composite. Well, what I want to do is say, show me just the mat just like that. Now I can see what's going on. The white is obviously what I want to be shown, 
and the black, or in this case, not totally the black, is what we're going to want to key out. So I want to make this a solid black, and I've already got a solid white going on in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my density widget here, and I'm just going to bring it all the way down. Let's just bring it down around, oh, I don't know, about 95 is probably good. Just like that. Oh, that's looking pretty good. We can see we've already gotten a long way right there. Okay, let's come and grab the lightness here. I don't know. We'll just drag this up here. Oh, that's look. See, look at that. We're doing pretty good already. We've just got this little bit of a mess on the outside to get rid of. We'll just drag this out a little bit more to about, oh, I don't know, let's say 73. And it's pretty much gone. The last thing that we're going to want to look at is we're going to want to look at balance. And let's set the balance up here to be, oh, I don't know, probably about 70. Oh, we got a little bit up there still, just a slight bit. Let's just bring our lightness up a little bit more. And there we go. It's pretty much gone now just like that and you can see that inside of our mat we're doing pretty good and you can see that we still have a lot of detail going on in the hair up here which is exactly what we want and it's very surprising considering i did shoot this with an hdv camera we have a lot of detail in there and you can see that if i switch from show mat to composite you can see that that key is looking pretty good now there's a couple other effects that I do need to include in this to add a little bit more realism to what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is step out of effects mode and we're going to come back over here to the effects palette and we're going to come down to mat choker. What I'm going to do is hold option on my keyboard and I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to apply it to the clip. The only thing is that you'll notice that nothing has happened. Well, this is actually a very important workflow technique that you need to understand when working with Boris Continuum Complete. What I'm doing is, because of the effects workflow in Avid's Media Composer, the team at Boris FX has taken that into consideration and has given me some tools to work with that I can tell the effects that I want to have these effects applied to each other. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to come down to the BCC chroma key effect. I'm going to drop it down. And I'm going to come down to title and matte. Because what's important to think about is that this is not title matte. It's title slash matte. It's working with titles or working with mattes. Now, what I want to make sure of is that in here, I set this to be multi-filter start because this is going to be the first effect in a chain. I'm going to turn that on and you're going to notice right away that everything in the background turns black. Well, for the purposes of working with matte choker, we're just going to say for right now that that is the last effect in the chain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to title matte. We're going to drop it down and I'm going to select multi-filter end just like that. And if you look now, we now have a very smooth edge around me because we're now working with a multi-layered effect, and we've told the effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete that that's how we want to work. So you can see now, and if I come back up to bypass the effect, you'll see we've got all this junk in here that we don't actually need. Well, guess what? By doing it as a multi-layered effect, we lose that. Now, this is a little bit much for what I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the blur back to be about 1.5, and what we're going to do is set the choke down around 25. That's much better. I I don't want it too blurry around the edges because that's not really too realistic. Most people might think that at this point we'd be finished, but we're not. There's one more effect that I want to add in here. And now because we're going to be adding another effect, what I need to make sure of is that I tell the effect that, by the way, this is now the midpoint of my effect. Because what we want to do is we want to add a light wrap. And it's right here, BCC light wrap. I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. I'm going to drag that down onto my clip. I'm going to let it go. And you'll see now that again, still in effects mode, I now have Light Wrap, Matte Choker, and Chroma Key all applied to this effect. What I need to make sure of now is that I come up to Title Matte and I tell the effect that it's going to be the end effect. And if you take a look now, I now actually have a little bit of a Light Wrap going on around my shoulders. And the great thing is, is that I really don't need to do anything with this effect. Why? because the effect is referencing the below layer. So if I just drag my effects editor over here, you can see what's happening is, is that the background layer that it's referencing for the light wrap is the first below, which is the virtual set. What I can do is I can tell the effect to show me only the wrap on black, and you can see there's the light wrap that's going on based on the background. Now, what is it actually referencing? Well, if you take a look here, it's actually referencing this really bright spot in Boris TV. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch back for a second because I want to position myself in the frame where I'm going to want to go and I want you to watch what happens with the light wrap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way back down to Chroma Key's Geometrics. And we're just going to come to Geometrics. I'm going to drop it down here and we're just going to drag all the way down because I want to come and I want to set my position. I want to position myself on the right side of the frame. So all I'm going to do is simply grab the X point and just drag it over like this just like that. And that's looking pretty good. Now you remember I had that light wrap going on around my neck. Well, guess what? If I come all the way back up to the top and I say, okay, 
well, show me the wrap on black. Guess what? The light wrap is really only on my right, or in this case, camera left, of my face. Why? Well, take a look. There's really nothing going on over here that's bright. The brightness is coming from Boris TV. That's why the light wrap is coming in here. So you can see this is the way to add a very ultra realistic look to your footage to give it that look that it's actually been shot on the set this way and not been composited afterwards. So believe it or not, I'm done. I can simply say, show me the normal view. And guess what? I'm ready to now render this out and include it in any production I'm working on. Now, I hope this tutorial has shown you that in just about every case when working with chroma key, chroma key is not the only effect that you're going to apply. You're going to want to apply multiple effects to give your footage that extra little bit of realism, like in this case, a matte choke and a light wrap to give it that realistic look like you shot it on the set. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.